Well, coming up on First at Five, a program that helps families in need during the summer is getting cut. We'll hear how it'll affect families in North Central Florida. Alachio County Sheriff's officials are setting up shop in a new location today. We'll hear where you can expect to find deputies in Gainesville. And a Florida football tradition may be headed south. We'll see the arena where owners are making a bid to host the annual Florida-Georgia matchup. All these stories and more are coming up. First at Five starts right now. First at Five, from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Florida opted out of a summer electronic benefit program earlier this month, and Alachua County families could pay the price. I'm Caitlin Schiffer. And I'm Jacob Sedesi. WFT's Mar Rochez spoke with local families and Alachua County school officials. Mar, tell us why Florida made this decision. I'm live here at the Alachua County Public Schools District office. Florida is choosing to opt out of a federal food aid program this summer, but that's not stopping Alachua County Public School leaders from feeding their neediest students. We do expect children to be hungrier in the summer months in Florida than in states that have accepted the benefit. In early January, 15 GOP-led states, including Florida, opted out of the Summer Electronic Benefit Transfer Program. The program provides eligible low-income families with $40 per child per month for food throughout the summer. The bipartisan program responded to low-income families' need for food aid after the pandemic. President Biden's domestic policy advisor, Neera Tandon, says this program would have helped feed over two million kids in the state. This is something that, you know, really shouldn't be a partisan issue. It shouldn't be really about politics. It should really be about all of us coming together to help needy kids. And um, that's how we see it, and we hope others see it that way as well. Despite the lack of funding, Alachua County Public Schools will continue to provide free meals for children 18 years or younger. As we recognize that so many young people uh, rely on the meals that they get at school and we want to make sure they have access to those meals even during the summer months. According to the Florida Department of Health, the rate of food insecurity in Alachua County has remained higher than Florida's overall rate since 2014. The latest data from 2021 has Alachua County at 11.1% of the population that's food insecure, compared to the 10.6% of the state's population. Know that these, these are children who might not otherwise uh, be getting a meal at that point, uh, and, and that is really heartwarming. There are expected to be more than 70 sites around Alachua County this summer that will give access to students for food this summer. We reached out to Governor Ron DeSantis' office to make a statement, but we are still waiting to hear back. Live from ACPS, Mar Rochez, WUFT News. Well, surgeons at HCA Florida North Florida Hospital in Gainesville are getting back to work after suspending procedures over pre-surgical equipment concerns. Reps for the hospital announced the pause a week ago. The hospital wanted to reschedule some procedures due to an equipment-related sterilization issue. Officials say teams are actively working to reschedule the canceled surgeries. The UF chapter for Students for Justice in Palestine's lawsuit against the state is heading to a courtroom tomorrow. SJP is being represented by the American Civil Liberties Union. The lawsuit is challenging Florida State University system Chancellor for his order to deactivate chapters at state universities. They argue Chancellor Ray Rodriguez and Governor Ron DeSantis' decision to punish the chapter is a violation of First Amendment rights by censoring speech and association. In November, Governor Ron DeSantis claimed the SJP chapters at the University of South Florida and the University of Florida were banned. South Florida's chapter also filed a lawsuit. Opening arguments are set at 9 a.m. in Tallahassee. Two men are behind bars for possession of child pornography in Ocala. 75-year-old Garland Lingerfelt was arrested on January 3rd on seven counts of possession of child pornography, and 19-year-old Joel Ozuna was arrested on January 23rd on 10 counts. Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force officials worked with Ocala Police to arrest the two after a cyber tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The Alachua County Sheriff's Office opened its third precinct at Butler Plaza today. The office says the area used to be a difficult to reach, but having their, a base there makes the plaza easier. Taxpayers get the benefit of having the precinct, but taxpayers didn't have to pay the costs. The owner of the plaza did. We have a lot of deputies that work here, and it allows them a space that they can uh, have a substation, meet citizens, do paperwork, 
in the area of their work and be able to return to work quicker than having to drive all the way from Hawthorne Road. The sheriff says this location allows more efficiency and productivity. Well, right now, airport officials are discussing a plan that could make parking for your flight easier. Members of the Gainesville Alachua County Regional Airport Authority are holding a public hearing about a new garage. The planned five acre site for the building includes a small parking lot that's only for employees right now. Those with knowledge of the project say they're planning a four story garage with 420 parking spaces. The building will have its own bathrooms and improvements to utility and stormwater infrastructure. The meeting began at four and we'll tell you what they decided tomorrow night. Well, looking up now to our skies in north central Florida, you may notice it is much hotter than it's been the past few days. WFT's AG Cornell is here to tell us if we can expect more relief from the frigid temperatures. Yes, yeah, so right now we can see mostly sunny skies above campus. Temperatures are warm with 81 degrees. Across the board, we can see our temperatures are very warm for this time of year in the low 80s all across north central Florida. As we get though into the rest of the evening, we're going to see our temperatures dropping into the mid 60s, still very warm for this time of year with a chance of some showers as we get overnight. Coming up next, we'll be tracking this storm as it heads our way and we'll see how it may affect your Sunday with rain. Well, an Amber Alert's been issued for a pair of children out of Lake County. Take a good look at your screen. FDLE needs your help finding one-year-old Natalia Williams and five-year-old Tilly Williams. Officials name 41-year-old Dixie Williams as the suspect and say she may be with them. Natalia was last seen wearing a pink pajama dress with a red heart and pink pants, and Tilly was last seen wearing a navy or gray top with multicolored hearts and gray sweatpants. Law enforcement officers warn people not to approach the suspect and to contact them immediately. And we're working to learn what caused a crash in Bradford County that killed two people and closed part of Highway 301 for hours. Bradford County fire rescue officials say they came upon that scene near Northwest 267th Street just after 6.30 this morning. The aftermath caused a second crash involving a car and a dump truck. That one sent another person to a local hospital with minor injuries. Marion County Fire Rescue crews are at the scene of a brush fire in Marion Oaks. As you can see in this photo posted on Marion County Fire Rescue's Facebook pages, there's smoke which could, could impact visibility conditions, so keep an eye out if you're driving in the area. Fire Rescue officials say they'll update as more unfold. The annual Florida-Georgia matchup may have a new home, at least temporarily. Camping World Stadium is in play for the big game due to some major funding. Orange County commissioners are promising $400 million in tourist tax money to reconstruct the stadium. Stadium owners expect to bid on becoming the temporary location for the Florida-Georgia game by 2026 and the home stadium for the Jaguars from 2026 to 2027. This comes amidst the team's potential move out of Jacksonville so their own stadium can get upgrades. But only if the city and the Jags can agree on the proposed $2 billion renovation. The Hogtown Medieval Fair will set its debut this weekend. Even though the showcase has taken place in Gainesville for over 35 years, this is the first year the event will take place in Depot Park instead of the Alachio County Fairgrounds. Activities include sword fighting, human chess, and medieval reenactment shows. Food and drinks will be sold along with many medieval themed vendors and merchants. The fair will be held Saturday and Sunday morning from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Three Alachua County teachers are getting ready to find out which one of them will become the county's next Teacher of the Year. The finalists are Metcalf Elementary School music teacher Dwinette Smith, High Springs Ca Community rather, school reading teacher Sarah Rendek, and professional academics magnet at Lofton High School science teacher Jennifer Knowles. Alachua County School Board officials will honor these three finalists and 36 other district nominees and crown a winner at a ceremony in just a few hours at Trinity United Methodist Church. The winner will go on to represent at the state level. Coming up on First at Five, President Biden heads to Wisconsin to announce a new infrastructure deal, while Nikki Haley continues her 2024 presidential campaign in South Carolina. What Biden, Haley, and former President Donald Trump are doing to rack up support. You're watching WUFT-TV News. 
Fresh off his endorsement, President Biden heads to Wisconsin to talk about his investing in American plan. And Nikki Haley is back on her home turf of South Carolina. Reporter Alice Barr is on Capitol Hill to tell us what Biden, Haley and former President Donald Trump are up to are doing to secure votes. Former President Trump in Manhattan today, fresh off this week's win in New Hampshire, now off the campaign trail and back in the courtroom. Taking the stand for brief testimony in his E. Jean Carroll civil damages trial. The judge admonished him for continuing to deny sexually abusing Carroll in the 1990s, something he was found liable for last year. Carroll is now seeking damages for defamation. The former president lashing out on social media about his legal troubles and against his remaining Republican rival, former U.N. ambassador and South Carolina governor Nikki Haley. Bring it, Donald. Show me what you got. Haley stumping in South Carolina announced she raised a million dollars in the 24 hours following her New Hampshire primary loss. Former President Trump saying anyone who contributes to her campaign, quote, will be permanently barred from the MAGA camp. Haley accused him of throwing a temper tantrum. I know that's what he does when he's insecure. I know that's what he does when he is threatened and he should feel threatened without a doubt. But there are serious questions about whether Haley can break through the former president's 30 point lead in her home state of South Carolina just a month away. This bravado is great now, but you should have been doing that eight months ago. President Biden already looking to the November election. He's in the swing state of Wisconsin today, announcing a nearly $5 billion investment in dozens of infrastructure projects across the country. The president trying to build momentum for his reelection bid. A new type of classroom is coming to Shell Elementary School. Alachio County School Board officials are opening a calm room on January 29th in Hawthorne. These calm rooms are meant to be a safe space for students to relax when combating anger, stress, and other negative emotions that may arise during the school day. United Healthcare aided in the room's construction through a $52,000 grant. School officials say the funds will support the district's mission in improving the mental health of students. Similar rooms have been constructed in Fort Clark Middle School, Santa Fe High School, and Howard Bishop Middle School. The Greater Gainesville Chamber of Commerce is turning 100 years old this year. The chamber representatives are celebrating with a centennial celebration dinner at the O'Connell Center. They say the dinner is just the start of a year-long celebration. They call it the largest and grandest celebration to date. That's set to get underway in just a few minutes at 5.30, just after the newscast wraps up. If you're heading to the... If you're heading to the Hogtown Medieval Fair this weekend, expect nice clouds and high temperatures on Saturday, but we'll let you know after the break how rain may affect your Sunday. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Temperatures are unseenly warm across north central Florida today, 82 degrees in Gainesville. Now the average for this time of year is in the 60s, so we're quite above the average, about 15 degrees. We're actually really close to the record for today in January, only 3 degrees off, and we're going to stay close to the record for the next few days. Now it's not only hot, it's also quite humid. We're looking at dew points across the board being in the mid 60s which means that dew points is the measure of liquid in the atmosphere. So as you can see, dew points in the 60s score in the muggy section of the muggy meter, and we're going to be quite muggy and quite humid for the next two days. We even have chances, 40% chances on Friday and Sunday for rain. But as we go through the rest of the week, we're going to drop significantly Monday with an upcoming cold front on Sunday. Now you can see tomorrow for our future cast, we'll see a chance of storms in the morning, but we really have a more chance as we get into the afternoon. But our main event weather event for this week is going to be yet another winter storm coming our way. Um, this storm is going to be bringing dry air. We're going to be dry through Saturday, but as we go to Saturday night, we're going to see more chance of storms. 
after the cold front passes through on Sunday, we will be clear for the rest of as we get into next week. Taking a look at our campus cam, we can see that we're pretty clear right now. As we go ahead to our seven day outlook, we'll see we're staying warm for the next couple days until Sunday. When that cold front and those storms come through on Sunday, then we're going to be dropping down into the hot low 60s as we get into Monday. As we go through the rest of the week, we'll be in the mid 60s, very mild temperatures and a wonderful week ahead. Coming up in sports, we'll dive into the Gators women's basketball game tonight against Ole Miss. And what they get, get back on track in the SEC tonight. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome to sports. I'm Jesse Simmons. Gator women's basketball is leaving the comfort of Gainesville after a two week home stretch to face the Ole Miss Rebels on the road. The Gators are looking for a spark from other than just senior guard Leilani Correa, who dropped over 30 points in consecutive games. At 10-7 and, and losing four of their last five, Florida is looking for their first win with in 13-5 Rebels since 2001. Momentum is building for the Gators men's basketball in the SEC as they picked up their second straight conference win on Wednesday night, muzzling the Mississippi State Bulldogs 79-70. Backed by a season-high 23 points from junior guard Will Richard, Though the Gators ranked dead last in the SEC free throw percentage, Florida held off Mississippi State by going for an unusual 10 for 11 at the line in the last 94 seconds, giving coach Todd Golden confidence and hope moving forward. Kondo makes his, like you guys said, I think eight, eight to ten free throws down the stretch to ice it and uh, never allowed it to get super, super, super tight uh, in the final four minutes. But um, this was a huge win for us, you know, um, and one that, that will we'll, uh, travel for us. The Gators moved to 13-6 and six on the season, and Florida hopes to make it three wins in a row as they host the 14-6 and six Georgia Bulldogs on Saturday at noon, who just barely edged an unranked LSU team 68-66 at home on Wednesday. Looking at boys' high school hoops, the Eastside Rams and Santa Fe Raiders battled it out in a last night late leading game-changing game. After an ice-cold start for both teams, Eastside took a 17-16 lead at the half. Apply pressure was the mantra in the second half, as Eastside stretched a six-point lead. But the Raiders wouldn't go away. They grabbed a quick turnover and capitalized off the mistake. Eastside's best shooter from beyond the arc went down with a knee injury in the fourth quarter, and Santa Fe took advantage, securing their fifth win in six games, 44-44, 44-47, improving to a 9-12 record on the season. Raiders head coach Glenn Banks addressed what's working now that wasn't before. But our guys, we had a new team, so they're starting to believe in the process and trust the process, and we're gelling, and we're making the turn right at the right time. The kid that got hurt is a very good three-point shooter. Uh, we just executed down the, down the stretch, and we hit some free throws. I mean, free throws win Let's the game. move on to high school hoops action for tonight. Boys basketball features the Hawthorne Hornets hosting the P.K. Young Blue Wave and the Trenton Tigers heading to the Hornets test to take on Lafayette. On the girls' side, 16-2 Trenton and Lafayette, 12-4 at 6.30, while 13-3 Wildwood hosts 11-5 P.K. Young at 7 o'clock. Shifting to the NFL, the Michigan Wolverines are losing head coach Jim Harbaugh to his second NFL stint just days after a national championship season. After nine seasons at Michigan, Harbaugh is headed to the Los Angeles Chargers, where he once played quarterback over decades ago. With the Wolverines, Harbaugh was 89-25 overall, while leading the Blue to three consecutive playoff appearances, and finally breaking through in 2023. In the NFL, he holds a 44-19-1 record. His last stop in the NFL was at San Francisco, where he turned a 6-10 team into an instant Super Bowl contender. He looks to do the same thing with an underachieving 5-12 Chargers team from 2023. Adding to the coaching carousel, the Carolina Panthers are hiring Tampa Bay Bucks offensive coordinator Dave Canales to be their next head coach. Finally, the official date and time of the orange and blue scrimmage has been set. The game takes place on April 13th with a hot 1 o'clock start. Thanks, Jesse. If this week's going to be any indicator, you know, it might quite literally be a hot start. AG? Yes, we're going to be very high above the average near record for the next three days, but we will dip down on Monday, heading into the low 60s for a beautiful next week. 
That'll do it for us tonight. BBC News America is next, and PBS News Hour is coming up at 7. Your Florida news is always on at WFT.org. Good night.